to welcome Professor Arjmandi to Razmafsar Research Team. Dr. Arjmandi holds a PhD in nano and microfluidics from the famed KU Leuven University in Belgium. He's a professor in physics and also holds MSc in electronics from Sharif University. Enjoy what he says about Shamshir and crucible steel. Hello, my name is Nima Ajmendi and I'm a university professor in the field of electronic devices and physics. Here I would like to have a few words about uh, physical properties of Iranian swords from Safavid dynasty. That is about 400 years ago. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my deepest thanks to Dr. Khorasani who introduced a very interesting field of Iranian arms and armors uh, to everyone and actually initiated this field. Um, swords were very important in ancient times and ancient civilizations uh, were dedicating huge efforts to research and development of better swords. Quality of a sword is determined by its material and design. Uh, Iranian swords of uh, Safavid dynasty are uh, usually made of uh, Fulade Juhadar, or in English, patterned crucible steel. Mm, this is a legendary material with a lot of myth about it. Uh, and this Material was produced in Iran, in today's Iraq, uh, Kharazm, Sham, uh, and uh, to some extent in uh, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, uh, Arabian Peninsula, and uh, uh, Ottoman Turkey. Uh, this material was not produced in other countries. It was extremely expensive, more expensive than gold, uh, and uh, it has interesting properties, even uh, comparing to modern steels. So there were uh, many uh, efforts to reproduce this material by uh, great scientists. Uh, a few of these uh, lifelong efforts has resulted in uh, uh, very limited success, and there are a few there are a few claims about uh, reproducing uh, this material in very small quantities, much smaller than salt, and actually. Uh, these reproduced materials are no match to, the, to their uh, ancient uh, counterparts in uh, quality and uh, uh, shape. Funa de Johada uh, is actually a dispersion of uh, iron carbide particles in fright. Iron carbide is an extremely hard material and its color is uh, relatively bright, it has a whitish color. And iron fright is a dark material that is actually soft iron. As you see in this figure, uh, the iron carbide particles are dispersed in uh, fright that is a dark material. These particles are extremely hard and this dark material is uh, it's a relatively soft uh, material and when the sword bends uh, actually these particles are solid and this is the dark material that uh, moves around these particles yeah. in full of the Johadar, these seven type particles are, are uh, agglomerated or gathered in uh, uh, lines or curves and uh, these are the white lines that we see uh, with bare eye uh, on these uh, uh, materials 
Each line is separated about a few hundred micrometers from the, the next line. Probably the most important uh, property a source material needs to have is uh, ultimate strength. Ultimate strength uh, of a material is the maximum stress it can tolerate before breaking into two pieces. Some of the two handles maximum the ultimate strength is about uh, 1000 megapascal. That is 20%, about 20% more than uh, modern steel alloys of the same composition. Another crucial property for a source material is its toughness. Toughness uh, is the energy required for partially or totally breaking uh, the material. Uh, full of the Johardor's toughness is about 100 Joule. Uh, this is a very high number, even comparing to the best two days uh, blade alloys, it's more than two times of these uh, best modern alloys. For instance, in the 390 or CPM steel alloys, which are very expensive and high quality blade alloys of modern days, uh, these alloys, uh, the, the toughness is about uh, 41 uh, joule per centimeter square. And uh, breaking full of the draw hard with 100 joule toughness, uh, uh, that is measured in a choppy test in, in a scientific setup. Uh, breaking full of the draw hard with this toughness is uh, very difficult in a battlefield. And uh, another property that, that is very important for a sword uh, material is uh, its hardness. Hardness is uh, the resistance of the material against deformation. Usually, a sword, uh, in order to uh, cut uh, or break uh, uh, an armor, the uh, opponent's weapon needs to be harder than that material. Uh, however, usually when uh, hardness of uh, an alloy increases, its toughness decreases. And uh, this trade-off mm, uh, makes a huge difficulty in uh, engineering an alloy for uh, a sword. However, the although uh, Fula de Johardar has a very high toughness, its hardness is uh, quite high as well. Uh, actually, mm, the macro hardness of Fula de Johardar, according to the Rockwell C measurement, is about say, 30 to 40 HRC. This is not a very high number. It is something like uh, a kitchen knife. Uh, this relatively low macro hardness lets the full of the draw harder to be tough. However, the micro hardness of full of the draw harder on uh, cementite particles or uh, near its edge, near its cutting edge, it's about uh, 76 HRC, and it's a very high number. It's why Fulhader Johader can cut uh, uh, armors uh, like a piece of cake. Uh, to have a sense of this number, the best modern blade alloys that we have uh, these days and we are producing in the modern world uh, the maximum hardness it's about uh, 63 or in the best case it's about 67 HRC while uh, the macro hardness of full of the Johardar is uh, more than 76 HRC another property 
that it's important in salt, in a salt material is uh, its mass density. A soul needs to be lightweight. So its mass density should be low. Fula de Druhadar has a significant amount of uh, carbon nanotube and uh, uh, cementite nanowires. So its mass density is slightly lower, lower than the, the lightest modern alloys we have. Usually steel alloys uh, mass density is between uh, 7.75 gram per centimeter cubic to 8.05 gram per centimeter cubic. And in best case, for instance, uh, for alloys like M290, which is one of the best uh, steel alloys for blades, uh, the mass density is about uh, 7.6 gram per centimeter cubic. However, mass density of Fula de Drohadar is 7.4 gram per centimeter cubic. Another property that is important for source material is the max, uh, uh, its uh, uh, flexural fatigue, the maximum number of uh, uh, of uh, elastic deformation cycles uh, the material can tolerate. Uh, unfortunately, this property is not measured for full auto hazard yet. Another uh, mechanical property that the source material should have is ductility. Ductility is uh, the, it's the maximum strain uh, the material uh, can uh, tolerate before uh, breaking. Uh, full auto draw hazard is uh, it's uh, it's a ductile material. Uh, its maximum uh, elongation uh, strain uh, it's about uh, 10 percent. That it's uh, it's two times more than modern alloys of a similar composition. And uh, if you uh, fix the tip and hand guard of a uh, Salt made of full of the true hardware, you need about a 60 kilogram force to uh, deflect the sword uh, by about 50 degree. And uh, so the ductility is uh, more than enough for a battlefield. Another property that, that uh, such a material needs to have is uh, an iso uh, true. It means uh, the property of the material should be different in different directions. You should be able to engineer uh, the properties of the material to be different in different directions. And it actually, it is possible to follow the Johardar and ancient uh, producers of uh, these Iranian sources, they were performing such an engineering. Another property that, uh, that is needed in these materials is in homogeneity, you need different uh, mechanical uh, uh, properties uh, uh, on different parts of a sword. <coughs> yeah, what you need uh, uh, on tip, it's different from what you need on the back of the sword or what you need on the hand guard or edge of the sword. And actually, it's possible and it uh, was achieved in ancient times to engineer uh, the properties of a full other Juhadar to have uh, different uh, properties uh, in different parts. Another mechanical property uh, is uh, uh, wear resistance, another material property is corrosion resistance. Uh, corrosion resistance of these uh, handmade uh, Swords, uh, uh, it's not as good as modern uh, stainless steel alloys. However, uh, comparing to other handmade swords like Japanese swords or other uh, swords, Fula de Johanna has a, a good uh, corrosion resistance and wear resistance. Uh, handle of Iranian swords of Safavid dynasty. Uh, 
in the best sorts is uh, made up a walrus tusk that provides a good friction with palm and uh, uh, even when uh, the palm is wet it provides a good friction yeah. also it's uh, smooth and it's not uh, it doesn't injure hand uh, and uh, inside the handle there is a relatively complex and precisely designed uh, shock absorbing system uh, this shock absorbing system contains a, uh, a spring and a dumper and uh, it absorbs the shock uh, from uh, the impact of the weapon. Uh, what about the design of these swords? These swords uh, are curved and uh, this curvature lets them to uh, be able to cut more easily. Also, this uh, curvature uh, uh, lets them to be able to trust mm, uh, into the opponent's uh, body even when the opponent uh, uh, has a shield it can turn around the, the shield because it's curved and uh, usually uh, there is a uh, design consideration in sword that is called uh, point of percussion or center of percussion. Center of percussion uh, is a point on the sword blade uh, on which if uh, the impact happens uh, the maximum energy will be delivered uh, to the target and the least energy will be reflected uh, into uh, the users of the source hat into the hand of source user here you see a straight sword and a curved sword uh, their center of percussion uh, is here and if you hit uh, by a straight sword and you miss center of percussion and uh, you miss center of percussion by some distance then the energy you are uh, delivered to the target will be reduced here uh, you see the force that is applied to the target as a function of distance uh, from the uh, hand part as you see for the straight sword here the red line uh, this force is uh, maximum uh, at the center of percussion and if you miss center of percussion by some distance this force will rapidly and linearly uh, decrease however in a curved uh, blade if you miss the center of percussion by uh, some distance the reduction in the applied force to the target will be much less than the straight sword so, uh, such a curved blade uh, uh, is a, it's more uh, uh, tolerant and it lets you to uh, miss a uh, uh, center of percussion by some distance when you're hitting a target. Uh, uh, another uh, design uh, property uh, uh, that a sword uh, that uh, uh, should be considered uh, in designing a sword is uh, its center of mass. Uh, usually in uh, long European swords or in Japanese uh, katana, uh, the center of mass is very close uh, to the handguard or even in the handle. Uh, some of them most of them they are two-handed swords when you grab uh, so a sword's grip by two hand 
the speed you have and the uh, uh, reaction uh, you can have uh, is very limited. Uh, you, and actually, in the battlefield, if you grab the sword by two hand, by two hands, uh, you will be a relatively simple target for a person uh, using a one hand so because uh, by one hand uh, you will be much faster and uh, more, much more flexible to use the sword. Uh, in Iranian swords, uh, uh, the center of mass is about uh, 20 centimeters in front of hand guard. Uh, and uh, considering the fact that uh, when you use a sword uh, by rotating your arm or when you use uh, a sword uh, when you are riding a horse, the center of percussion moves towards uh, the center of mass. So when the center of mass is here near the handguard, the center of percussion when you are using uh, the sword uh, on a horse will be here and it's almost impossible to use uh, this part uh, of a sword to hit someone. However, in the Iranian sword, when you use it uh, on a horse, the center of percussion will be moved to here because the center of mass is here. So still you can effectively use the sword even when you are uh, riding on a horse. Most of Iranian swords are about 80 centimeters long from their handguard to their tip. And it means uh, they are slightly longer than Japanese or European swords, which are about 75 centimeters. Uh, and this 80 centimeter long sword, it's the longest sword uh, 180 centimeters tall man can keep in his hanged hand, uh, sorry, in his hanged hand without hitting the ground and use it uh, easily without hitting the ground. Uh, these swords are about 6 millimeter thick here near the handguard. Their thickness here is about 5 millimeters and their thickness here is about 3 millimeters. Their width here is about uh, 40 millimeters, the width here it's about 30 millimeters, and the width here it's about uh, 15 millimeters. Uh, they are extremely sharp. They are actually after uh, about uh, 500 years, 400 years, they are still sharper than a razor blade. And uh, the weight it's uh, very low. They are extremely light. They are only 700 grams comparing to Japanese swords which are about 1200 grams or European swords which are about 1200 grams or in some cases 4000 grams. These uh, 700 grams are extremely light. Actually this sword that I'm keeping in my hand is about 600 grams. Uh, this light weight <coughs> makes these swords uh, uh, to be used with only one hand and makes them an extremely fast handheld weapon in a battlefield. Uh, they can be uh, so light because of their material, because the, uh, this Fula de Johada uh, has a very high toughness, so it doesn't need to be very thick. It can be very thin and still it doesn't break into pieces. And also, the hardness of this material is extremely high, so it does not need weight to be able to damage the target. It can cut the target or it can uh, thrust, uh, thrust the target because its uh, hardness is very high and it can penetrate and it can cut uh, through the armor of the targets. 
it doesn't need to be like a mace or uh, like an axe. It doesn't need weight. And it's uh, uh, moment of inertia along its uh, handguard in uh, this direction. It's about uh, 0 0.05 to 0 0.1. Sorry, meter square kilogram. And uh, here, as you see, it's hand guard, it's a uh, cross guard with two weights here and here. Uh, this hand guard increases the moment of inertia of the sword around the, its longitudinal axis. And it's very important for such a curved sword because if uh, an impact happens to its side, then the sword will rotate in its user's hand. An impact here or here will uh, try to rotate the sword in user's hand. To prevent this rotation or reduce this rotation, it's very important to have a high moment of inertia around this axis. And these two weights are providing this moment of inertia. It's polar. It's about uh, 25 millimeters big, and uh, it's it has a right angle uh, uh, with the grip in the inward direction. And the pommel has some uses in battlefield, of course, in some techniques in battlefield uh, they were using pommel. And also, this pommel works like like a weight here. And it increases the force that the sword uh, applies uh, on the target, and it reduces this uh, reaction shock force that is applied uh, to the user's hand. Usually, these Iranian swords from Safavid period they do not have uh, fuller. Some of them they have fuller, but most of them they do not have fuller. Uh, and uh, usually they do not have any uh, engraving uh, on their grip and there are, there are some decorations here at uh, their uh, handguard usually and uh, sometimes they have decoration and uh, a pommel but usually they only have uh, uh, a sign of uh, the person who made uh, the so the uh, group leader, who, the person who leads the group, who made the so, and they do not have uh, many decorations usually uh, on the blade. Sometimes they have, but in most cases, uh, their only decoration was the pattern of this material. Thank you very much for watching. Wish you a nice time.